This video is a follow-up to the massive Blur retrospective I uploaded here last month. I'd recommend watching that video before this one if you haven't seen it already. In that video, I briefly mentioned a mobile game called Blur Overdrive. I wanted to talk about it in more detail at the time, but I couldn't because it was taken off the Play Store at least five years ago, and all the copies I was able to find online were either incomplete or crashed after failing a license check they had no way of passing. The fact that I couldn't go into more detail about Overdrive has been bugging me ever since I posted that original video. So on a whim one night, at 2am, I decided to see if I could get it working, and I'm happy to report that I eventually succeeded. So now, a month later, here's my review of Blur Overdrive. Before I get into the game itself, I want to quickly go over what I went through just to get it working, because it took me a couple of hours and was a bit of an ordeal. When you search online for Blur Overdrive, most of the results that come up are APK downloads for version 1.1.1 of this game, which was the last version released before it was pulled from the Play Store. This is the version that I originally tried to get working last month that kept failing the license check, and I still can't get it to work now. Most of the sites that host these downloads provide nothing in the way of readme files or troubleshooting info but a little more digging revealed that most copies of Blur Overdrive on the web can be traced back to a single, sketchy Russian download site that specializes in pirated mobile games. Running the Blur Overdrive page on that site through Google Translate actually did turn up some install instructions, but it was nothing I hadn't already tried. The real value of this page was further down, where I found a comment from someone complaining that the game didn't work and recommending that people instead try version 1.0.7. So I searched up Blur Overdrive 1.0.7 and came up with far fewer results. I spent a good half hour sifting through a series of increasingly sketchy websites and came up with nothing but page redirects and dead download links. But then finally I found it. On the fourth page of search results I found a Spanish language site that links to another Russian site that had working download links for version 1.0.7 of Blur Overdrive including the critical 150 megabytes of data files that have to be installed separately from the main APK. After waiting forever for a couple of downloads that I swear never got above 50 kilobytes a second, I installed the game on my spare phone and it worked perfectly. So let's find out if all that trouble was worth it for a game that used to just be free on the Play Store. I was initially somewhat impressed with Blur Overdrive, just because it was able to hold a stable 60 FPS with my phone in power saving mode. Though that probably has something to do with the fact that the hardware I'm using is about six years newer than the game itself. But I haven't seriously tried to play a mobile game since about 2013, so I've never seen this kind of 3D performance on a phone before. Unfortunately, you won't be seeing that performance in this video, because the extra processing load from my screen recorder app causes frame drops and occasional slowdown. While my very first impressions of Blur Overdrive weren't terrible, it's all downhill from here. After buying my first car, I got a stark reminder as to why I stopped bothering with mobile games in the first place. Because Blur Overdrive has microtransactions. It's at this point that I need to mention that the copy of Blur Overdrive I'm playing has been modified. In fact, about half the copies of this game you'll find online have been hacked to give the player functionally unlimited resources. I was originally aiming for an unmodified version of this game, but the one copy I was actually able to get running has been modified, so I took what I could get. I was initially worried that having access to unlimited money would completely screw up the game balance, which it kinda does, but it mostly just improves things to the point of being barely tolerable. Having unlimited premium currency makes the countdown timers and other psychologically abusive monetization tactics completely irrelevant, but the game still pesters you to buy microtransactions all the same. I have zero tolerance for this kind of scummy, predatory bullshit in any game, so if it weren't for this mod, this video would be over right now. I was a bit surprised that Blur Overdrive has microtransactions, because this game came out in 2011, which by my recollection was a couple of years before every mobile game on the planet was completely overrun with this kind of garbage. Though after my research into Blur proper, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Activision helped pioneer this kind of predatory game design in the mobile space. Even trying to ignore the predatory monetization tactics, Blur Overdrive is absolutely terrible. I guess I'll start with the controls, because it's the first thing I noticed upon starting the game. There are three control styles to choose from, and none of them are good. The first one I tried was this bar that you swipe back and forth to steer, but it doesn't behave at all how I expected. 
I thought it would work like analog steering in most racing games, where moving in either direction along the axis turns the car, and critically, letting go or returning to the center makes the car stop turning and straighten out in whatever direction it's currently facing. The way the steering actually works in this game is that you don't control the car directly, but rather control the direction of this arrow, which the car gradually turns towards until it's facing the same direction. Not only does this make it feel like the steering input is oversensitive and is on a weird delay, but the arrow doesn't reorient to match the direction of the car when you let go. I kept running my car into walls until I realized that I had to manually straighten it out and couldn't just let go. The footage you're seeing now is my actual first attempt at playing Blur Overdrive, and you can probably tell just how disoriented I was by these controls. The other two control methods have most of the same problems, but are at least a little bit better by virtue of being able to move your finger in a circle to match the arrow you're actually controlling. I'd say the steering wheel is the best option of the three, and I'd only call it passable at best. No matter what you go with though, steering your car feels like dragging a stick of butter around a hockey rink with a coat hanger. The way acceleration works is weird too. At first I thought this icon in the corner was the gas pedal, but it turns out it's actually the brake. You accelerate automatically until you hit top speed whenever you're not running into something, which is about half the time. If you do hit the brake, your momentum vanishes almost instantly. There's no slowing down just a little bit to take corners easier. If you tap the brake even once, you've most likely just lost the event. Because most of these races are super short. Like as little as a single lap around one of this game's tiny tracks short. If you fall behind, there's usually not enough time to catch back up before the race is over. The only exception is the Eliminator races, which can last up to a whopping two or three minutes if you do well in them. You might actually spend more time at the starting line than actually driving in certain events, because races don't start on their own. The AI will sit and wait patiently at the starting line until you touch the controls, at which point everything will abruptly spring to life. I sat there like a dumbass waiting for races to start on their own a couple times before I figured out what was going on. I guess I should also talk about the power-ups, because this game sure has them. The power-up system in Blur was a central component of that game's design, but in Overdrive it feels like the power-ups only exist out of contractual obligation. The power-ups in Blur Overdrive are identical to its big brothers in both design and function. The only difference is, now they all suck. The power-up animations look terrible, and half of them use generic stock sound effects instead of the ones from Blur. The offensive items feel like they barely have an impact, and the repair kit now only restores a fraction of your health. Firing power-ups backwards is no longer a thing, and advanced strategies like long shots with the bolt and dodging through shock fields straight up don't work from a top-down perspective. Even if they did, I doubt this game's controls allow for enough precision to pull them off. The only truly useful power-up is the Nitro Boost, and that still doesn't seem as effective as its counterpart in Blur. It turns out the power-ups are deliberately weakened to push microtransactions, because Blur Overdrive is a full-on pay-to-win game. You can pay to upgrade each individual power-up, but I found that it doesn't make much of a difference because the controls in this game are so terrible that you can't properly use them. The main thing that affects your ability to win is your car's top speed, which you of course also have to pay to upgrade, and then spend premium currency to skip the countdown timer for the upgrade to take effect. Having fully upgraded top speed doesn't even make the cars feel particularly fast. You just win with less effort. I'm not even convinced there's a substantial performance difference between the different vehicle classes. Thanks to the daily preview events, I was able to race in some A-class cars right at the start of the game, and they don't feel noticeably different to control than the D-class cars you start out in. Speaking of daily events and vehicle classes, I should probably talk about progression, which Overdrive also completely botches. You know how in the real Blur, there's a clearly laid out series of rivals to beat, each with their own set of progressively more difficult races and optional challenges? Yeah, well none of that's in Blur Overdrive. Instead, you pick a vehicle and get presented with this game's entire catalog of events to choose from, which is like 20. You're locked out of most of them until you have a vehicle of the required class, which of course you have to buy, either by grinding the same few races over and over, or via this game's preferred method of paying for microtransactions. You could easily experience all the content in Blur Overdrive in about 40 minutes if it weren't locked behind paywalls and arbitrary countdown timers, which is exactly what I did because I'm playing a modded copy of the game. And let me tell you, it was one of the least rewarding gaming experiences I've ever had. 
Though I didn't bother trying to take on this game's single rival, because their demands are absurdly grindy and are the one thing that can't be entirely skipped with microtransactions. I am not playing any more of this game than I absolutely have to. There's something deeply flawed about a racing game where I can consistently finish in last place, but still make progress just by buying things. I think I spent at least 40% of my time with this game in the menu, both because the races are incredibly brief, and even with unlimited resources, you have to spend an ungodly amount of time fiddling around to upgrade everything. I can say with confidence that Blur Overdrive is the absolute worst game I have ever looked at on this channel. The worst part is it's not even entertainingly bad, like Ride to Hell Retribution or Sonic 06. It's just the total embodiment of every bad design trend in mobile games of the time. I originally had a bit planned about how the vehicle models look kinda weird, but upon reflection I think they might actually be one of the better aspects of this game. It doesn't even feel like a Blur game. Outside of the power-ups and a couple of menu icons, Blur Overdrive could be a completely original title. I guess that shouldn't be surprising given that Bizarre Creations had nothing to do with its development, which was farmed out to two developers, Marmalade Play and App Crowd. Marmalade Play has gone on to develop a bunch of games for Hasbro, but as for App Crowd, they seem to have only ever worked on five games and still feature Blur Overdrive prominently on their website. And that's Blur Overdrive. Between this video and my previous one, I think I've said just about all I can about Blur, both as a game and a franchise. Next video will be something completely different. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Be sure to leave this video a like, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I've got some other videos up on the screen you might enjoy.